Hello, today you join me at the wonderful Rookery Waters where we're fishing on Raven Lake. And I'm going to keep it nice and simple in this short video. I'm going to show you just how to fish meat. I've got some hemp as well, just to put a little bit of a, a base down that the meat can settle over and hopefully the fish settle over it. But I'm going to fish two rigs. One's just in front of just going to deeper water and then one just coming to the margin. I'm going to start in front of me, throwing meat out of my hand and then I'm going to feed a little bit on the inside and have a look at them later on in the session and hopefully show you how simple meat fishing is to catch a lovely net of fish. Well, to start the session off, I'm going to feed probably half a pot of hemp and I'll put a good handful of the cued meat. I'm going to kick that off on my line that's just at the bottom of the shelf. And I've gone at a slight angle. My marker's the tree on the far bank, what I've plumbed up to, and I know that's just at the bottom of the shelf. If I cut that in there, and all I'll do throughout the session when I'm fishing, I'll just pick up four or five cues and just throw it like that. I've got a main table that I've cupped in there, and I'll just be chucking a few grains of, um, cubes of meat over it. And what I may do is, depending how well I'm catching, Maybe in half hour, if we've got time, just put another cup of hemp in. Now my second swim, which you could call it your margin swim, but I'm probably a metre out from the bank. I'm in line with the next platform. I'm not putting no hemp now, I'm just putting meat. So I'll give it, I don't know, maybe a good handful of cubed meat and that's all I'm going to cup in where I've plumbed up in the margin there and then I should just throw again not as often as I'm fishing feeding in front of me but I'll just throw a few cubes of meat out my hand every now and again priming that ready for when I go on there because in fishing all sessions whenever you go and especially in matches you've got to have another line primed ready you can't put all your eggs in one basket no, sometimes I'm actually may have three lines on the go. I'll cut that in there, and then all I'll do then, I'll just pick up a few grains and just chuck it in like that, a few cubes. And when I've fed those two lines, I'll be quite happy. There's no wind or nothing. I just throw in by hand a few cubes to the margin and regular feeding as I fish in front of me, throwing a few cubes. But if it was windy, and it was hard to get that certain area, then I'd put a toss pot on the end of my pole. As you can see, all different sizes, but very important because if it was windy and I couldn't keep my feet in a certain area, just by putting a little pot on the end of your pole, it will keep all the bait nice and tight. And you don't have to keep it as tight because you can tap out your pot and spread it a little bit, but at least you know you're spreading it where you're gonna fish. If you're chuck, trying to chuck my hand and it's going everywhere, then it's a complete waste of time. You're better off just cupping every now and again. But with a little pot on your pole, you can put a few uh, cubes of meat in regularly and in the right area, keeping it nice and precise rather than having it all over those winds blowing it everywhere. Just to make that session, or especially in a match, make your catch more. Because if you're concentrating the fish in a certain area, even though you're spreading it a little bit, brilliant. But if it's going all over the place, then you've got no chance. So just by attaching a little pot on the end of your pole, brilliant way of feeding, brilliant way. I just fed on that margin and see a tail, I see one swirl. But the idea of having two lines is because where it's starting to warm up now, and with meat, I think it's like a bait they want it gives them, gives them some real protein. And it's a time when they look and normally meat works very well, just as they're coming up perhaps to spawn, just as it starts warming up. If 
fishing probably 45, 50 minutes now, and I know I'm catching that margin. The fish just don't want to be in the deep water. I've had a few indications, missed two bites, and had one fish there. So it just shows it's not right, it's just, but because we've primed that other line, I've got somewhere to go. If I just put my eggs in one basket, just fished here, tried it here, that's it, that's the, that's the session ruined. So I'm gonna come off this now and have a look in that shallow water, and I'm sure I'll catch straight away, because I've seen a lot of fish down there um, the time I've been fishing here. So, but when I turn around now and start fishing down the margin, I shall still feed this line into the deeper water so if I catch a few of them and that dries up, I can come back to here. And there's always a chance they could turn up here later. Oh. There we are, straight away. And I've hooked it and I'll just chuck a few grains there. Yeah, a lot of mirrors uh, in this lake, they're nice fish. Um, and it's full of F1s as well. That feels like that may be a mirror. Yeah, I think it's definitely a mirror, it's just the way it's, they just plod around. As you saw there, it was just a beautiful bite, the float just gently sailed away. It's gentle lift and, and you're in. But they, um, they do fight well on here. I'm using their Holocore Orange, which is 10 to 12 rating. And that's just the job. Got 14 hook on 016. In fact, using their pre-tied hooks that uh, I'm really impressed with. What a beauty. Absolute mint condition. Perfect condition. Well, as you saw by that size of that fish, how you can easily build a weight up with these mirrors. Um, obviously there's a lot of F1s in here, but it really is a good method, that meat, and it does sort out the better fish. Well, I'm gonna get my head down and catch a few fish, and um, when you come back, we'll have a look at the rigs and hooks and that that I'm using. Right, well we're catching plenty of fish now, and as I thought, in the shallow water. The deep water was a, was a no-no really. I had a couple of fish there and um, just hardly any bites. They just wanted to be up in the warmer water. Um, but I'd just like to run you through the rigs that I chose to use. Um, for the deep water, because it's like five and a half foot, it can be six foot in places um, on here, um, I had a 4B16 and I had a spread bulk. I had my main line 018 um, and I've been using our new pre-tied MXC ones as you can see here I couldn't tie them any better and they're all tied to our power micron um, I've used a 14 on both rigs but in the shallow water I've used a four inch pre-tied we call them pole rigs but hook lengths and then in the deeper water I've used a six inch because with the shallow water and you're fishing a bulk, even if you've got a bulk and one dropper, your dropper might be the only shot that you could put on your hook length. But all my shot is on the main line, on both rigs. So if I lose a hook, I can just put another hook on straight when I'm fishing. If you're using a six inch hook length, let's say in 12 inches of water, 
all your shot has got to be on your hook length. So if you use it, lose your hook length, you've got to start putting shot on the line. It just makes it much quicker and it's a much better presentation with a short hook length in shallow water. And that's why I opt always when you're fishing the margins and across four inch hook length, or if you go by depth, if it's, say it's, it's more than three and a half foot and upwards, you can use probably a six inch hook length. But then it depends if you're fishing pellet, soft pellet, you sometimes want to bulk right close near the hook. And so if you're using a six inch hook length, your shot would be on that hook length. So nine times out of 10, it's, it's a four inch hook length for the commercial fishing, unless it's really deep and you can get away with six inch. But definitely for your margin fishing and across four inch. I mean, some people even tie some three inch ones, but I think four inch is quite adequate. I know a lot of these F1 fishing, you can use smaller hook lengths if you're fishing in real shallow water, because obviously F1s are fish are smaller than, than big carp. Um, but yeah, my main line, 018 power micron, 016 is the hook length, using their new cubed shot, um, which is brilliant because they don't come off the line. Um, and the elastic that I use, as you can see there, is I love the holocore. You know, I've used the slicks, but I love the holocore, and that is the 10 to 12, which is the orange. And that is, that's perfect for 014, 016 hook lengths, sort of maximum. And then if you're getting a lot bigger fish, then obviously you can step up, use the 10 to 12, which is the red, or um, 14 to 16, which company called the pink. Um, but I just love the holocore. It's very stretchy, very forgiving and I'm just used to it now, I'm just probably, I'm old, I'm setting my ways, but uh, I love the holocore. Well, I think it's very important, like I talked before about lifting the float, make, when they get a few swells, just make them take your hook bait. But also the feeding, just keeping that regular feed. It's not loads, just three or four cubes, five cubes maximum. Go in and even when I hook a fish, I just come away, feed a few cubes, so I'm preparing for the next fish. You've got to try and keep a little clock in your mind. Yep, three or four cubes. Three or four cubes, not mad, not lashing loads in, but just keeping it, keeping that rhythm going. You know, say so when you fish, if you're fishing the pellet waggler, just keeping those pellets firing in with your catapult all the time. Cast a shallow, just, but you're more, uh, more of a, a more frequent rhythm. This is just a nice, steady or gentle rhythm. Just a few cubes. You know, fishing shallow you'd be going again, but no, just, just keeping a few going in. But too much in, they'd be all over the place and your fell look them, and it's just trying to keep them in a, a, a nice, steady feeding pattern, rather than manic, which it can be if you start feeding too much. just affecting my feeding a little bit and I think if I put a pot on to keep the bait a bit tighter I'll nick a few more fish I just I think I'm just spreading it a little bit too much seeing a few swells and that I think it's time now maybe just put a pot on so I think I'll get this next fish I'm gonna pop a little pot on and just see if that tidies them up a bit just puts them in a little tighter area and I'll catch a little bit a little bit quicker a little bit better I've got one fish there, I'll just chuck a little bit in and I'll put a pot on now and just see if that changes the, the bite ratio and fish ratio. You know, it's not just a matter of just feeding and trying to catch or catching and I'm always thinking how I could catch more. You know, that's what I'm thinking all the time, try and catch 
a little bit quicker. You know, slightest little changes can make, make all the differences to your catch rate. Give me another little F1. Oh no, look at that, it's a little carp. Little mirror. Right, let's get a pot on. Well, I've, I've put the pot on and I've had probably six feeds and I've, n I've not missed this many bites the whole session. I'm getting more bites now and I'm missing them. I just wonder where I'm concentrating. I'm not chucking any by hand. It's just making them a little bit weary. They're looking at it and it, they're just feeding a little bit different. I'll give it another three or four more goes and I'm gonna start just, still use the pot, but I'll just throw a little bit by hand because I think by spreading it, it gives them more confidence. I must have missed five in five puts and I've probably missed only two or three bites the whole session. I'm getting more bites quicker, but I haven't hooked anything. Oh, I'll hook one then. I'll just chuck a couple by hand as I hook one. Because with a pot, I'm not gonna feed till I go back out. So I'll just chuck a little bit by hand just to keep it going. I'm just thinking, just wondering where I've put the pot and I'm keeping the bait tight where it's been spread out before where it's not so conspicuous when they come in. I think they come in and they're just feeding a little bit so I missed the bite again then. I think they're just not sure because it's in a tight area where it's been spread out. So I just think maybe with the pot it is the wrong approach. Obviously if you're fishing across and you can't feed by hand then you've got to use the pot but I just think it's it's just making them a little bit weary because the bait's in a tight area. That's why I've missed a few bites, they're just taking it different. Let's just chuck a little bit by end again. Like I said, each time I hook one. Well, it's been a good session. You never stop learning at fishing. I put the toss pot on and it just, at first I, start, I missed, I've never missed many bites, four or five bites on the bounce. And then it started to work with the toss pot and still throwing a little bit by hand. Just brilliant, just kept it tighter and still spread a little bit with my hand and it much better, much better. Caught a lot of fish, just trying to think all the time, chopping and changing. Obviously they don't want to be in the deep water, they wanted to be in the margins, in the shallow water that's warmer. We had a lot of rain last night, but that's not to say another day they'll be in the deeper water. But as I've done, you give yourself both, both options. Keep feeding that line just in the deeper water, so you've got somewhere else to go. Still swirling down there now, unbelievable, unbelievable. Well, I think I'll pack up now and have a look at what we caught. I think we'll finish with that one fish there. It's either a big F1 or another carp. Absolutely lovely. Oh, another mirror. Well, I think that's a lovely fish to end on. Let's have a look, see what we've caught.